Hey, in this video, I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks and hacks in Lightroom that'll really help you either edit faster or just improve the quality of your post-production and color grading. So the first cool thing that I like about Lightroom is that when you hit the crop tool, if you start pressing O, you can toggle through different compositional tools. For me, this is the compositional tool I need for this particular shot. And you can see how I can just nail that composition using this tool. Whereas with just a standard crop tool, yeah, it kind of works, but you really need to be able to toggle through for a lot of shots to get the best. And for me, it's the first thing I do to every image. I crop it first. Granted, in an ideal world, we wouldn't need so many cropping, but things change and it's, you know, clients change their minds, briefs change after the shoot more often than you'd imagine. And having that feature is just absolutely brilliant. The next great little hack we have here is using the color picker just to get that white balance spot on. And then once we've got the white balance, we need to also adjust the contrast. And I do that through highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. And the most important thing to do here is to hold the alt key. Because when you do that, it'll show you exactly what's crushing in the blacks and then in the highlights, what's clipping. So although I've got a calibrated monitor and it's a decent BenQ monitor, it's never as good as actually going, yes, I know for a fact that's not clipping. We'll bring our shadows up, we'll really open those. Go back to our blacks, see how it's affected them, just make sure we've got a nice contrast. And then pressing backspace, we can see where we started and where we've now come to. So as I move through my edit, I normally get into the clarity. I don't normally add clarity to portraits, but to food I often do. Almost always remove some of the vibrancy in modern cameras. This is a 80 megapixel phase one, and the newer ones, they've done the same as what Canon have done, where they've just added vibrancy to everything. And then we move on to the most powerful tool in Lightroom, which is the HSL slider. And the best little hack about this is this button here. So I'm on saturation at the moment, and we're going to go to these greens, we click on an item, we can go up, and we can go down. And it's a global adjustment, so it's affecting the whole image. But it's a great feature to have. Now what I've also noticed from doing that is there's a bit too much green in the colour, so I'm just going to push the magenta slide up a bit. So I noticed that all of this background was going up and down with it. Now I'm just going to leave the saturation about normal there, but if we go to luminance and do the same again, we can go, let's make these a bit brighter. Let's bring these up a little bit. Bring the blue, bring that down a bit. And we can really adjust the image's general feel and the balance of color brightness, or obviously luminance as it's called, within the image. And it's a great tool. It's something I use on every single photograph. It's just utterly brilliant. Definitely get to grips with it. The hue slider is a nightmare to use, but I find it's only really of use in mixed lighting scenarios. When I'm using studio lighting like I've done in this shot here, this is completely lit by Broncolor studio lights. I don't need that sort of thing going on. It normally comes out pretty close. Now like with the blacks, whites, shadows and highlights, pressing the Alt key in the sharpening box gives us a similar thing. Now, I often find it's better to zoom in whilst doing this. So you can see exactly where we're masking. We're gonna get nice and tight. Just look at the radius of the sharpening. There we go. And I find that the higher resolution cameras, you can get away with a lot more sharpening without it starting to look artificially sharpened, which obviously it is. So there we go. So I hope that's of use to you. I hope these little hot keys are useful. I'll pop them in the description so you can just have a quick look through using backslash, O, Z, all these little keys. And there's so many things you can do in Adobe packages that it's really hard to work out exactly what you need to read. And let's be honest, who reads the user guide for anything nowadays? So these are just a couple of tips I think you might find useful. There's certainly things that I found useful when getting into Lightroom. I'm really bad at text, but it actually took me four years to find most of these. And I, you know, it's just by picking up little hints and tips from various people, various blogs, YouTube videos. And sometimes it only takes one little thing to make your work go from here to here. Just that slight tweak in how you do things can have a massive improvement. If you're enjoying these videos do hit subscribe I'm doing two to three videos a week now I tried a video a day for a month and at one point I was like yeah I'll carry this on I'm not going to carry that on it is fine when I have no shooting on but on a busy shooting week it is impossible so two to three videos a week if you're enjoying them stick around